Hi guys, so today is a brand new video and now that I am back, I'll be posting more Genshin videos. So for today's video, I have planned to talk about the things I wish I would have known before playing Genshin. Now Genshin is a pretty complicated game and obviously I didn't know that when I started because Genshin is my first official big game that I started playing. So there's a lot of things and a lot of simple mistakes that I've made. I know some of you might just be starting Genshin or maybe even motivated to play after taking a long break and I decided to talk about the things that I really wish I would have known before I started investing in things and raising characters and all the other things. So I thought by making a list of things and making it really clear, you wouldn't make those same mistakes and there are ways you can avoid it or do something differently. So without further ado, let's get started. I have a pretty long list and I'll try to go through it quickly so you're not here for a long time. But if you enjoy the video, let me know and let's get started. If you are looking for aesthetic keyboards, mice, or any desk appliances, I highly recommend you start your search on the Lowfree website. Lowfree has beautiful collections of various desk appliances that are sure to suit your style. Check out my link down below if you'd like to help support the channel. Now, back to the video. The first thing that I really wish I would have known is that story quests take a really, really long time. So when I first started, I thought that the game is just about playing in the quests and doing the main Archon quest, but then when I unlocked story quests, I was really overwhelmed because at that time, there were so many quests to do and I did not have any time to complete them at all. But eventually, I did get through almost all the story quests, I just had to do Kazuha's and then the event quest, but the thing about it is that there are so many characters and these quests take almost an hour, 45 minutes, or 30 minutes to complete, depending on if you're reading the dialogue or not, and all these other variables as well. Now at first, I was really interested in reading the dialogue and it was really fun to get through things, but then it just kind of got repetitive and it's basically like you meet the character and then you play them in a domain for a little bit and then that's the end of the story. Some stories were not as interesting as others. I know that things like Zhongli's story where you have to fight the boss, that one is pretty intense. And then some others are more relaxed where you're just learning a little bit about the lore of the character. The thing about it though is that they take a long, long time and there are many parts to the quest as well. I really didn't think that the quest would take that long. I thought it would be a short 10 minute quest like world quest, but no. If you want to do story quests, I really think you should prepare to be sitting for a long time. And you can even put on the autoplay mode when you run the quest so that you can just sit back, relax, and listen to the dialogue. But if you're the kind of person who just skips to the prima gems at the end, that is totally fine too and it will definitely take less time. Although the quests with the animations, those do take quite a bit of time to load in. If you want to achieve well in the game, expect to be farming a lot because you need to farm in order to progress. Whether that be using your resin and doing domains and bosses, or just artifact farming, or even farming for these materials like Hero's Wit or these other mob drops. You need to take time out of your day if you want to farm because you really won't get these materials other ways unless you purchase them in the shop or you get them through commissions, but that isn't always a steady source since the shop does sell out and you do have a limited amount of stardust or star glitter, and commissions don't always give you the most. If you want to ascend lots of characters, it seems pretty cheap at the start because you only use a few materials, but in reality, you do spend a lot more mora and XP books and also ascension materials. So don't get fooled by the very low cost at the beginning for talents or ascensions because you will end up spending a lot more later. If you are a really busy person from the start, like if you are a student or just someone who doesn't have a lot of time in their day to go out and farm, the best thing you can do is set aside a small amount of time each day to just farm, get things done. It doesn't have to be a lot, and you can even just use condensed resin if you want things to go quicker. But just having that time where you're going to farm in order to progress, that can be really, really helpful. Farming is a really helpful thing if you want to progress faster, but you don't have to speed run through the game, and you don't need to try to get to AR60, you don't need to reach the end or ascend all your characters at once, so take as much time as you need, and there is absolutely no rush to be raising your characters. 
Even if you think the countdown for Spiral Abyss is just pressuring you to use your resources, ignore that completely because sometimes I skip an entire phase of the Spiral Abyss just because my characters aren't ready or I'm in the process of building or sometimes I just don't have the time to do it. So make sure that you have a farming plan beforehand and you're not rushing it completely but you're also having the steady rate of farming. One thing that you might notice is that I do have a lot of resources because I save up a lot. I have lots of artifacts and I have lots of XP books and I do have quite a few weapon enhancement ores. So I actually find this pretty helpful to stock up on things. This wasn't like this before when I first started Genshin because back then, about 1.6, I decided to spend a lot of things and raise characters that I didn't even use or need or I spent on raising weapons that I wouldn't even use in the future and that's when I went almost broke on Genshin and I didn't even have enough Primo gems for a single pull. So a really helpful thing early on is to save up and stock up on resources until you know exactly what you're going to use them for. I also thought about this when I was ascending a character, like do I really need to ascend this character and will this benefit me more than it will cause damage to my account or will I have to be wasting a lot of things just to get this character ascended. Now some of you might just be ascending characters because you really like them or you like their design and that is totally fine. As long as you have a clear plan for ascension and you're not just ascending characters for no reason, then that is totally fine. But the best thing you can do is stock up on Primo Gems and especially save your Primo Gems and Mora and XP books because those are the main things that you will really need to progress. As for Primo Gems, you're going to use them to pull on characters. So saving your Mora and Primo Gems is going to be helpful in the long run and trust me, you will be happy with yourself once you do have a lot of Mora and a lot of Primo Gems. The next thing you should know is to not spend your Primo Gems on standard. Yes, that's possible you might have 9 of these wishes and you just want to pull one more, but still hold your temptations and do not do that 10 pull and spend your 160 Primo Gems on this banner. Because a lot of the standard banner characters will appear if you do lose the 50-50 on the event banner. And the best option is to just use the wishes you get from Battle Pass or the Ascension Rewards and just spend it here and not use your Primo Gems. Instead, use your Primo Gems on the event banners and the weapon banners. I made this mistake when I had around 8 of these pulls and I just wanted to do a 10 pull. I don't really think it was necessary to do that because sometimes you might just get a bad weapon. So instead of spending your Primo Gems on standard, I recommend you wish on the event banners. Or if you're not interested in getting the characters on the event banners, then just save them up or turn them into these wishes. I like to keep the wishes in Primo Gem form just so I know how many Primo Gems I have and if I've reached my saving goals. The next thing that I really think you all should know is that making a second Genshin account isn't always the best idea. Now I know you might want to have a second account on a different server, like if you play on an America server and you want to make an Asia account so you can play with your friends, that might be good, but I don't always recommend making a second account because sometimes the first stages of the second account, like getting to AR-16 and finishing the first story quest just can be a long time and I don't really like running through all those story quests and sometimes farming for one account is enough and I don't really have the time to farm on a second account. Now maybe some of you might have a little bit more time on your hands and making a second account is a better option for you or you just like to play and you want to do it again then that is totally fine but if you're getting bored of your current account making a second account isn't going to be the best thing for you if you're getting bored of this account i do have a video about what to do if you're bored but maybe try switching up your playing style or ascend a different character or do something that you wouldn't normally do and switch it up a little bit Progressing through a Genshin account like getting all exploration, all the oculi, and running through the story quests takes a long time and I don't want to have two accounts with different progress, I'd rather have one really good account than two weak accounts. Another tip regarding on wishing is to not pull on character banners that you don't want. So for example, if I want to get Yoimiya in the second half and I want to build pity, usually people would pull on Klee's banner. But I do not recommend doing this in case you get Klee early. Now if you're still confused about pity, I do have a guide on that and I'll link it up in the corner. The thing about building pity is where you wish a lot and then you try to reach hard pity or even soft pity, but that doesn't always work because you can get the character early. Now let's say for example you already have Klee or you don't like 
sickly and you don't want to get her, then don't wish on her banner. If you know me, then you probably have heard this tip for a really long time and just to have a plan. I even have a guide all about character preparation and how to plan accordingly, and I have a lot of videos where I'm just repeating myself on have a plan, have an idea of what you're doing, and I really would like to emphasize this tip. If you're raising characters without a clear plan or a clear idea of what teams you want to run together, then you'll be wasting your resources and building characters that are going to be unnecessary to you. Have an idea of which teams you're going to use for Spiral Abyss, which characters you want to main, and which talents to prioritize. So for example, if you want a physical DPS, then find a character with a physical build, like I built Rosaria as my physical DPS for Superconduct. If you want a vaporized comp, have a pyro and hydra DPS or have a support. Make sure you have this clear plan so you know what you're doing and you're not wasting your resources. A plan will really help out on your ascension progress and will give you an idea of what to do and what not to do. The last and final thing that I wish I would have known is that the adventure rank ascension isn't going to be easy. Well, it wasn't easy for me. This is the domain where you do the adventure rank ascension, and I really wish I would have gotten some tips or some advice on how to do this. If you are still trying to complete the adventure rank ascension, I have a guide, I'll post it also in the corner. The thing about the adventure rank ascension is that if you want to progress to the next levels, you will have to complete the ascension. Once you hit AR50, I believe you don't have to do it anymore, but when I was still a low level player, it was really difficult for me to complete the AR ascension, and I realized having built characters is going to be much better. If you're struggling to complete it, make sure you check out the guide. I hope these tips have been helpful. So those are all the things I really wish I would have known before playing Genshin, and I hope you found something helpful here. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. If you'd like to request a video, comment it down below. Links are in the description as well as timestamps, and any videos that I mentioned are going to be in the top corner. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, good luck on your pulls, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!